Now another area the state is spending a lot of resources is our justice system. Obviously, back in 2009, the chamber released the Leaky Bucket Report, which you know pointed out some of the inefficiencies, and there has been some good bipartisan legislation that has passed, and some of those holes have been plugged. But there's still more work that needs to be done. So what kind of reforms would you like to see passed in terms of the justice reform to cut down on costs? Yeah, and again, you talk about a place to save money. The amount we spend to incarcerate somebody is so much larger than the amount that it would take to educate them. And when I was a kid, there was one-tenth the number of people incarcerated in the state of Kentucky than there are today. But to what end? Are we that much safer? Or are we that much more productive? Are we that much more effective at, at, at making our way in the world? I would argue that we're not necessarily. And at what price? I'm a big believer in expungement. I really am. I think there needs to be legislation that we need to implement. People aren't used to hearing things like that from a Republican, but I mean it sincerely because we are a nation of second chances. We are a nation where we have always afforded people a chance to pursue the American dream. And yet, by dint of many things beyond their control, we have increasing numbers of our population who are on tracks from birth that never allows them to assimilate into the productive part of society. That has got to end. And instead of incarcerating people, this, this, some of, we need to rethink a lot of this legislation. Some of it's federal, some of it's state. But we need to rethink some of these fast tracks to incarceration that are serving us no real purpose. And we need to give people the ability, frankly, that if they have served their, their debt to society and they were nonviolent offenders and they have re repaid whatever is owed, and they have kept themselves clean through the parole period and the probationary period and whatever the case may be, that we need to give them the ability to have restored to them some of the same privileges and rights that they had lost, including voting rights. Giving them skin in the game, giving them a voice, giving them the dignity associated with being responsible for their own future. These are things that have to happen. These are not partisan issues. This has to happen whether a Republican or a Democrat is leading the state. And these are things, as a Republican, if I'm elected, I'm going to lead the charge on because we cannot afford the cost to do otherwise. Well, when you bring up the expungement, there's been a, a push in the past couple of years for that. It hasn't passed yet, but it says that there's a five-year waiting period and it's a Class D nonviolent mm -hmm. felony, which would be a minor drug crime, something along those lines. So you would be supportive of an expungement bill. I would, depending, again, how it's crafted and what it covers when it, when it refers to the things you've just spoken about. Uh, and, and, and is nuanced in that way, I would be supportive of a bill like that. But again, it depends on the actual bill itself, what is in it. We need to, let's walk before we run, but without a question, because to continue down this path of spending six figures to incarcerate somebody versus five figures to educate them, that's a loser's game. And we're losing in this state, unfortunately. There's a, you know, our state motto, united we stand, divided we fall. We're falling, we're falling, and we can't afford to continue to fall in this state. Now there's been some talk about maybe reclassifying some of the felonies. So a Class D could maybe be a misdemeanor because of the of how long the list is of Class D felonies, and they are things like, you know, low-level drug crimes and things like that. Would you be in favor of that at all? I, I it again depends on what we're talking about reclassifying and who I would defer to is the people who are in law enforcement, the people who are in the judicial ranks. Because trust me, they're as frustrated as anybody. They really are. And there are wiser minds than mine as it relates to judicial issues among those ranks, both actively and retired from those ranks, many of whom I've spoken to, many of whom have informed my thinking thus far. I will put together a panel of people who frankly know this issue inside and out, and I will defer to their judgment on this issue. And that's what any good governor will do. This is not a partisan issue. It really isn't. It affects every single Kentuckian, regardless of how they're registered. And we've got to fix it. We've got to fix it.